Hey everyone, Seth with Curated here. GIFs are a great tool for newsletter creators to quickly show off their content in a quick looping video. Recently, I've created a few GIFs specifically for newsletters, like this one for Optin Weekly, so I thought I would share my process for creating GIFs for your newsletter. So we'll start with step one. Outline what you're going to record. The benefit of a GIF is that it's quick and it's to the point. So you want your GIF to clearly highlight what you're trying to show. Ideally, you want to highlight maybe one or two things and you don't want it to overload or confuse people or be too long. So you could show off what your newsletter looks like by doing a slow scroll or highlight an action taken in a newsletter, similar to how this GIF shows how the search button works in Curated. For this video, I'll create an example GIF to walk through the process that I use. So let's say that I wanted to record the process of how to subscribe to Optin Weekly. So let's say I already created my outline of what I want to do. So then we can move on to step two, which is practice your movements. The eye of your viewer is going to follow movement on your screen, which might be your mouse cursor or scroll through the page or whatever you're showing off. Practice these movements to make sure you know where you're going so you can confidently lead the viewer's eye. So if your GIF highlights you taking a certain action on a web page, like subscribing to this newsletter, start your mouse in a noticeable place, like on top of the swipe background right here, and slowly and steadily move it to where you want it to go. So for example, I would move it slowly over to this text box right here. And I took an arc to draw the attention to it. Normally our mouse movements are pretty sporadic, but you want this action to be clear, concise, and really get to the point. For another example of practicing your movements, say that you want to show the content of your newsletter by scrolling through it. So to do this, make sure that you have slow, even scrolls that pause frequently so that the viewer can focus on what they're looking at and not be dizzied by quick scrolling. And don't be afraid to do multiple different recordings of the video that you can stitch together in the editing process. As long as you're not afraid of doing a little bit of light editing, you can take the pressure off of yourself to get everything right in one recording. Now we're ready for step three, which is recording the actual video, which will convert into a GIF. There are a few apps out there that can record your screen and immediately convert it into a GIF for you, but I find that that takes away a lot of the ability to edit certain aspects of the video. Um, so in my workflow, uh, I just start by recording a regular video of my screen using the Mac's built-in QuickTime Player screen recorder. As you can see that I have running right here to record this actual video. Um, but there's also a lot of different free apps that you can use that can create just a simple recording of your screen, something like Loom that you can use in your editing process after this step. Again, don't be afraid to break your outline into multiple smaller recordings that you can piece together later. At this point, if you think your recording is good to go, you can move on to converting the video into a GIF. You can go ahead and skip ahead to that chapter in the YouTube video if you're ready for it. But in my workflow, I'll move into the editing process. Step four, editing the video. This step involves a lot of personal creative decisions to control what you want your GIF to ultimately look like. With the right amount of time, you can create a really great looking stellar GIF, but sometimes you need a GIF by tomorrow. So I'll break this step down into must-haves when editing this video and nice-to-haves that if you had the additional time you could add in to make the GIF look even more stellar. Quick note, I am using DaVinci Resolve for this, which is a free editing software, but I'll keep these steps broad enough to apply to most editing software out there. So let's start from the top. I've already imported my video clips into DaVinci Resolve and we'll start with the first must-have. If you recorded multiple video clips that you want to edit into one, make sure that that's your first step, which for most video editors is pretty simple. Just a task of dragging and dropping it into your timeline and arranging it in the order that you want it to be. So for this example GIF, I had one clip of me actually typing in my name and subscribing, as you can see in this preview right here. And then I went ahead and recorded another clip that shows just my mouse moving over away from the subscribe button. So let's move on to the next must have, which is trim up your video segments. So now that we have the clips aligned in the way that we want them to, we wanna make sure that they flow easily and that there's no dead space in the videos. If you're anything like me, when you first click record screen, there's one or two seconds where you pause to make sure that you know what you're doing and that your screen is successfully recording. So you can see that right here, there's a few seconds where nothing is actually happening. We wanna make sure that we cut out those segments where nothing is happening, because once again, a GIF is quick and gets straight to the point, so you don't want there to be that one or two second lull where it's just a static screen. And then at the end, 
there might be a few seconds where you go to stop the recording. So you want to make sure to cut out those dead seconds as well. And if there are any loading screens in your recording, if you're traveling between different web pages, be sure to cut those to be as quick as possible because you don't want your viewer to have to wait through those loading screens. Now that I've put the clips together and they've been trimmed, we can move on to the next must have, which is adding something that signifies that the GIF is over and is about to loop. So to do that, I'll move into this editing section of DaVinci Resolve here. And what I'm talking about when I say add something that signifies that the GIF is over, uh, I mean something like a splash of color to show that the video is over and that it's looping to show the viewer that, okay, this video is over and I've seen what I need to see. GIFs are great, but they do automatically loop and it can be a bit disorienting, confusing for a viewer if they never actually know where the GIF stops. And when we're dealing with something like a page that looks similar, like this opt-in weekly page that we're dealing with here, it can be hard to tell when the video is actually over and is when it is looped. The way that I show that the GIF is over and is about to loop is by having a flash of white light at the end of the video. So you can do this by adding a solid color to the end of the video here, setting the color to be white, and then scrolling in here to zoom in a little bit and making it fade in so that it is a flash of white color instead of it being super sudden. So we can see what that looks like here, where it flashes to white, and then when the video would loop, when we convert this to a GIF, it will start at the beginning of the video here. And this leads into the first nice to have for your video, which is adding a flash of color at the beginning of the video to help with the looping. Now, as we'll see when we convert this to a GIF, when this video loops, it can have a bit of a jarring effect if you don't have something to transition through that loop. So what I mean by that is if you include a fade in from a bright white light at the beginning of the video, that will really help make the loop look professional and really smooth. So to see what that looks like, it's a fade in right there. So you can already kind of start seeing what it'll look like on the loop where when we end right here, it will fade to white and then at the very beginning will fade in from white. The next nice to have is zooming in on focal points of your recording. This is a great addition to work on if you have the time and skill necessary to show this off for your GIF. It brings a lot of life to your GIF and it makes sure your viewer doesn't miss anything. But it's something to be careful with and make sure that you don't disorient the viewer or overwhelm them. For this example, I went ahead and added in a zoom in when I begin to type in my email address, as you can see right here, which is the focal point that I want my viewer to be attracted to when they're watching the GIF. So a few points that I want to show here is that in the video, if we start from the beginning, I don't start zooming in until my movement of the mouse is complete. I do this so that it's not an overwhelming view of zooming in and seeing the mouse move because when I'm moving my mouse, I want the viewer to watch where my mouse cursor is moving to. And then when I begin typing, I want the user to see what I'm typing to subscribe to this newsletter. I'm also not cutting off anything too important. So we can see that after I zoom, you can still see the newsletter description here and the prologue. You don't want to zoom in too much so that the video would become pixelated since we are recording off of a desktop browser here. The last nice to have is speeding up your typing. If your GIF includes typing, you can make that typing a bit faster to save time, but still maintain the human aspect of the video. I went ahead and clipped this part of the video where I was typing and made it a bit faster so we can see what it looks like here. Now that we're done editing the video, we're ready to export and move on to the last step of converting it to a GIF. There are some video editing tools that allow you to immediately make a video into a GIF inside of the tool itself. But for my workflow, I use a free tool called Easy GIF. This is Easy GIF, which is the website that I use to convert videos into GIFs. And it's pretty easy to use and gives you a lot of options to edit the GIF once you make it. So to get started, we just click this button here that's video to GIF, and then it'll ask us to choose the file that we wanna use. And then we'll click upload video. And here's our GIF. We can preview what it looks like by pushing play right here. It'll give us a few details about our GIF right here. And then it'll ask us for a start time and an end time. 
We can also choose what size we want it to be. The two options that I always look at is original up to 600 pixels or original up to 800 pixels. You can crank it up to 800 pixels if you want a bit more of a higher quality GIF in the end. And then you can choose your frames per second. Um, now you have a few options here and they all depend on the length of your video. Uh, so the longer video you have, the less frames per second that you can have in your GIF and the less frames per second you have in your GIF, the more choppy it looks. It's a standard recommendation of 10 frames per second, and that's what I normally use as well. Sometimes I'll go up to 12 if I want to look a bit smoother, but for our purposes, I think 10 is the way to go. For method, I normally keep it at the FFM PEG and then convert to GIF. So when we scroll down right here, we can see this is what our GIF looks like. Now we can notice that it's a bit more choppy because it is working at that 10 frames per second, but that's normally how GIFs look and people have gotten used to that's how uh, GIFs performing. But if you want to be a bit smoother, you can always come back up to the frame rate drop down right here and choose a higher frame rate if your video can allow it. We can also see our file size here. So if you're using this GIF in something like Curated that accepts up to three megabytes of a file size, then make sure that that file size will work with whatever your end goal is. And then we can also choose to crop, resize it, and do a lot of other things here. But for now, this is looking great to me, so we'll click Save. And here's our GIF in action in a newsletter. So we can see the zoom in there, the sped up text, and then the bright flash right there at the beginning at the end. And that's my guide on how to make a gift for newsletters. If you have any questions about this guide, feel free to email me at support at curated.co. Thanks for watching.